All right, let's get started. I want to send a warm welcome and a big thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar that is being brought to you by the Digital Innovation and Leadership Initiative. Uh, this initiative is in partnership with the Digital Supercluster and supported by the federal government of Canada. And it has actually been co-created with industry and academia to help organizations and individuals build capacity for digital transformation. My name is Jennifer Beal, and I'm the project lead for DIAL. I'm also a special advisor to the Dean for Executive Education at SFU's BD School of Business and Executive Director of Canada for Coastal Cloud. I'll be your host for this webinar session today. And I wanted to um, give a big introduction also to our academic director who is here and will join us uh, shortly, Professor Dr. Blaise horner Reich, uh, who will be providing an overview of the Digital Transformation Management Program today. And we also have two special guests, uh, Sienna and David, that will join us shortly, uh, who are actual current participants in uh, the, one of the programs and they'll be sharing their stories with you as well. Uh, I want to ask if you have any questions uh, throughout this session, please use the Q&A box. You should be able to find it in the bottom center of your screen. Uh, type your questions in there. Uh, we have about 20 minutes that we'll share with you, and then we'd love to interact with you uh, for the last half of our session together. So please uh, ask away any questions that you have. So to get us started, I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Vince, could you launch our first poll question? So you should see something in your screen uh, right now. Uh, and we are curious, how often do you work with data or on a digital platform? So just go ahead and click one of those options there. Are you interacting daily, once a week, once a month, or maybe never? Um, I'll give you a second to, to click. Thank you for your answers so far. We'll give you a last little moment here. All right, I'm gonna share the results. So we have most people interacting daily uh, and that doesn't surprise me. I don't know if it surprises you, um, but absolutely we are living in a digital world right now. And I will get us going here around how we're adapting in this digital economy. And so what we often hear is that we're all living in this digital space, but nobody has actually taught us how to do it. And so we have developed this digital innovation and leadership initiative to help with exactly that. And what we like to say is we're turning up the dial on digital transformation and both helping individuals and organizations really adapt and thrive in this environment that we find ourselves in now. So what is the DIAL initiative? Well, the DIAL initiative provides an innovative and responsive solution across Canada. And what we're trying to do is engage with individuals because we know it's the people who have ideas that drive this innovation forward. And we want to help them develop the knowledge and skills to be able to advance their careers and also help these companies with new ideas. Uh, it is really trying to keep Canada competitive in this digital economy because we know it spans the globe. And so we have different levels of competition we're now engaging in. And we need to accelerate economic growth. And by doing so, we're creating new jobs in this space as well. So we have been working uh, together with partners. There's a large consortium of partners, over 40 plus, where we have uh, for-profit, not-for-profit, different academic, as well as different um, equity partnerships that are coming together that are um, trying to understand how we're creating a solution uh, for Canada. We are about halfway through our initiative um, and have promised to engage over a thousand people uh, that will participate in skilling programs uh, to help them uh, on this journey. And it is an $18 million plus initiative with $4 million that has been invested by the federal government through the digital super cluster to really help build this capacity. So this uh, slide here gives you just a snapshot of some of those partners that we've been engaged with to co-create this solution. 
And I was looking at the registration list and I see some of our partners in the audience. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Uh, we have lots of different representation from different industries and sectors, as well as different sizes of organizations um, that are uh, engaged in this initiative with us. So how to get involved as an individual? I wanted to take a moment to explain a little bit around the different pathways that we have to get involved. So if you go to the left-hand side of this slide, you'll see that you can be coming out of post-secondary. So you could be a recent graduate. Uh, you might be coming through a partner that we have, uh, such as our equity, diversity, and inclusion partners, uh, perhaps coming from the First Nations Technology Council, or maybe you are a veteran coming in from with you with me. Uh, or perhaps you have just immigrated into Canada and want to get involved and might be coming through one of our partners like the Immigrant Employment Council of BC. So lots of different ways to get involved through some associations you already might be um, connected to. And then we also have folks coming from a transition. Maybe they're coming from a different industry like forestry or fishery or what have you and looking for a new career path. And so those are also coming in uh, to our digital scaling opportunities. And then if you take a look at the right hand side, we also have partners um, uh, and participants that are already employed at a company, but maybe they've been tapped on the shoulder. Uh, they're doing more digital work these days and they're looking to also develop their skill set. So we have large, small, medium, uh, for-profit, not-for-profit, different partners that are coming in and supporting their employees to upskill um, and learn these new digital uh, ways of working. So I'm going to uh, explain a bit more about the digital skilling opportunities. And maybe Vince, if you could launch our next poll question here. I'm curious for the people that are in uh, the room with us today, what kind of business unit um, are you currently working in? So you should see a poll question coming up. So are you in accounting, finance, maybe HR, maybe you're in IT, uh, marketing, sales, operations, or maybe something we didn't think about. <laughs> so there's another there as well. I'll give you a moment to answer here. All right, I will end the poll and share the results back with you. As you'll see, we have a lot coming in from operations, uh, but we do have a spread, uh, most part across the board here. Uh, and this is what uh, we're finding in uh, our environment right now. Uh, all different types of business units are engaging in digital transformation. And so it isn't necessarily just IT, which I think a lot of people associate when you hear digital transformation. Oh, that's the IT department that will do that. Well, it's not anymore. It really is across all these different units that now need to work together um, in different ways. And so we've developed two different programs to, to help um, people uh, upskill, but also engage with different functional roles within their business. So if you launch the, the next question there, Vince, I'm curious um, if there's anybody in the audience that's managing a team. All right, I'll give you a second. So are you managing a team? Yes or no? I will share the results with you. We have some managing a team, uh, but others that are not. And really, this is one of the key ways that you can differentiate between what program might be right for you. So if you said, yes, I am managing a team, we have a program for leaders called Digital Transformation Leadership. And this is really to help you uh, create um, and evaluate uh, your stage of digital transformation within your business unit or your team uh, for your company. And what we do is we help you engage with others across different industries to learn what they're doing right now to push their projects forward. So really, if you're managing a team, it's that digital transformation leadership program that would be a good fit. If you are not managing a team and you're perhaps um, an individual contributor uh, within a company, we often hear project managers, analysts, programmers, developers, solution architects, uh, there's lots of different job titles, but if you're one of those individuals, this is the right uh, webinar and uh, program option for you in the Digital Transformation Management Program. And so uh, we wanted to take a little bit of time to share about these programs that you can engage in um, in this initiative. 
And so if you are one of the leaders, we actually have a webinar coming up on February 7th uh, that will do a deeper dive and you can talk to some program participants. So you can take a picture of the QR code if you're interested there, if you're managing a team and want to learn more about that opportunity. And for others, we have our Digital Transformation Management Program. And I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Blaise horner Reich, our Academic Director, who's going to explain a little bit more about this program option. So Blaise, over to you. Welcome, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, the Digital Transformation Management Program is for, as Jan said, early to mid-career individuals, consultants, business systems analysts, business analysts, individual contributors within an organization who are going to be involved in digital transformation. Because it's you folks who move digital transformation forward, not just the technology folks, but all people in operations and different business units. So this is an 18-week virtual program. So it's faculty-led. So you have, we'll have three faculty, and I'll introduce those in a moment. They will lead uh, different modules in this 18 weeks. There'll be a module every week. And then three times in the program, there'll be peer learning sessions where the whole class gets together. The time commitment that you can expect to make is about four to six hours a week. And that depends on your current kind of capability with some of the toolbox items that we'll be asking you to master and then, uh, and then show us what you've done. Uh, so about four to six hours a week. So you do need time to, to spend on that. And by the end of the program, you'll have a knowledge and skills to become a better contributor. That's the idea is for you to help the organization or help yourself um, become a better contributor in a digital transformation environment. Next slide, please. Here are the three faculty members, myself on the left. I'm the academic director. I'm also a professor of information systems and innovation at BD School of Business. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Yip is the Assistant Professor of Management and Organization Studies and a leader in collaboration and teamwork, research and practice. And Dr. Andrew Gimino is our Associate Dean of Grad Programs at Beatty School, and he is uh, an innovator, an entrepreneur, and you're going to love him if you're in this program. Next, pro next uh, slide, please. So the goal of this program is really to bring business knowledge and technology knowledge together. So it depends on what side of the fence you're on right now. It's to help each of you see over the walls that these silos create. So for technology professionals, I noticed there's at least one person said that they were in a technology department to help you understand more about the business realities, the business processes, the customer journey and pain points, the critical KPIs that business tracks. The more you can understand these uh, elements the business is so focused on, the better you can contribute. And for our business people uh, to actually look over the wall, look over the tech wall, to figure out, to be able to do these empathy maps, to be able to create a inter entity relationship diagram, that, that's along the program, we're going to be asking you to do things that take you into the technology world so that you can better contribute and collaborate with technology professionals. Next slide, please. So you'll be developing this toolbox that I've talked a little bit about. Each module will give you some aspects of that toolbox. For example, for tech people, learning about what's a KPI and how do you choose between options when, for change in a process, how to map a process, how to create a, a, a project roadmap. All those are going to be toolbox items that you're going to exit the program having learned about, but also having done. And in Jeff's modules, you'll be learning tips and techniques for collaborating across different perspectives because digital transformation is a team sport. Everybody needs to contribute and be able to uh, communicate across their silos. And all the way through this, we're going to be asking you to create visuals, create a process map, create a roadmap, create a work breakdown structure to be able to communicate your ideas effectively. Next slide, please. So again, it's an 18-week virtual program, two two-hour synchronous sessions uh, in it, and seven 90-minute peer working group sessions, and about four to six hours per week altogether. Next slide, please. 
The program journey is in three pieces that go along with us as the three professors. I do the strategy and consulting piece where we're really talking you into the concept of business, process, strategy, evaluating the process and moving on uh, and then evaluating the process and then recommending change. So you'll be learning to think as a consultant. Internal people, whenever, if you're a, you're a financial analyst or you're an HR person, you're, you're consultants in your organization when you're working on digital transformation. You're consulting to the organization to help it move forward. So putting on that mindset and learning about gathering data and keeping privacy and then recommending change and running meetings. That's what that first section is all about. The second section is called business solutions design and that's Dr. Jamino's section. And you'll be then adding technology to the process view that you've already had. So you'll be adding technology in the sense of um, looking at business architectures, looking at project management, looking at change management and, and evaluating processes. You're going to be body storming an organization going in and evaluating what they've done. And then you're going to be creating some uh, ideas for change that now involve technology. And all across all of those modules, Dr. Yip is going to be giving you tips and tricks about teaming and collaboration, building trust, gaining perspective, coaching others and yourself, and and, in, and being accountable, which is all good for your organization, but also for you in your career. So the weekly rhythm for a student in this course is every week you have online modules will be opened. So the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to review those modules. And then you, well, there will be an ask of you every week to do something, either comment on something, create some diagram, so what you want to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is listen to the material, do a draft of that assignment, and then bring that draft on Thursday to a peer working group session. So everybody will be online then, and you'll be uh, working in this peer working group session to show your work, to improve your work, because you're going to get feedback. And then Friday, Saturday, um, clean up that work that you brought in as draft, post it on the online discussion board. And you will get comments on it from others, and you are responsible to comment on others. And that's how we do some cross-sector and cross-disciplinary um, learning. We we'll learn from other people as they create their ideas, their assignments, and they post them. So that's the weekly rhythm. It goes from Monday to Sunday with the posting with the peer working group in the middle on the Thursday. That's the kind of capstone where everybody gets together and then delivers their assignment Friday and Saturday and comments on others. So that's the rhythm of the 18 weeks in our program. Thank you, Blaze. That was a great overview. Um, and really to bring it to life, I think uh, it's great to actually meet some participants. Uh, and so we uh, have two current participants uh, of the Digital Transformation Management Program with us. Uh, I'd like to warmly welcome uh, Sienna Zhao, who is a financing uh, specialist in the commercial financial services at Royal Bank of Canada, and David Gilbert, who's a senior business analyst uh, currently in the information technology at Can uh, Canadian Forest Products or Can4. And so welcome, Sienna and David. Um, this is the part where we would also open it up to any questions from the audience. Uh, I will compile those uh, as we go. But maybe just to start, uh, Sienna, if you wouldn't mind, uh, why did you join the Digital Transformation Management Program? Yeah, actually, um, my employer sponsored uh, me joining this. Um, before, I wasn't considered anything related to IT. But then it becomes uh, like, um, like a horizon opener for me once I join the program. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a magical experience. Oh, that's great. And David, why did you join? So <clears throat> I've actually done quite a few projects for our company based around uh, digital transformation and, and, and IT and never really had any structure around it. And my, my uh, manager uh, posed this uh, class to me too. So he said it would really help with what we're doing. So, 
Amazing. So I think you were probably one of those tapped on the shoulder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. This program yep. can really help. So I'm curious, um, how is it going? What are, what are you learning in the program or what's a major takeaway that you've had so far? Maybe David, if you want to start. Sure. So it's really interesting. A lot of these techniques that the program goes through, I found that I had used them um, in previous projects that I had done, but I guess unknowingly was doing them. So there's really no structure around how I was building my projects, kind of just learning from my mentors and things like that. But the class really helped put context to what I was doing. And it's allowed me to better structure how I approach projects in the future. So um, we have a project coming up in a couple of months and I'm already starting to apply some of the stuff that we've learned uh, through the course. Um, You know, it's not, greatly detailed but it provides that base that you really need um, especially if you've been in the industry for a while and and done a lot of projects it really puts a lot of uh, context to to i guess methodologies that you hadn't done before amazing yeah i hear that quite a bit right it's some stuff that we kind of know it's floating out there you're doing a little bit but um this program really helps get to the point almost of these are the key things that you need to know to be successful awesome feedback um, Sienna, I'm curious from your perspective, um, what is a, a learning or something that is helping you um, right now within your world of work? Yeah, it's like um, very beneficial in terms of first, like the business consulting hat to put on. Mm-hmm. So, and actually I changed my, um, um, how do I say, how, how I view this uh, daily job, like how can I improve as an internal consultant perspective? And then of course it's um, how people um, change the technology. So in terms of how to uh Um, get over the hurdles and then how to get the team to engage and then uh, coming from a human perspective Mm -hmm. that's really uh, helpful too and these are all transferable to -to day-to-day job good point Um, and I'm curious maybe just to pick up on the day-to-day job piece Um, maybe uh, explain a little bit about how you're using this in your work. I know, Sienna, you shared uh, a little bit about the context and um, your role and interacting uh, through different business units and some of the projects that might be coming your way. And so just, yeah, wondering how you're applying it in your work. Yeah, so um, before uh, we had a system, like a uh, rollout system in um, in my previous job. And then I, that was before learning this whole thing. But then after the CTM program, it put me into a different thinking mindset to say, oh, like uh, that's how the steps I actually was taking and how, how much more I could do potentially to help. And with my company right now, um, like um, it's adopting the Salesforce 360 system. So it will help for me to analyze it a little bit more in depth and then thinking about the whole picture and how to get the team engaged and how to share best practices, uh, anything that we can uh, suggest in the advice to optimize change to actually make the process simpler, faster and better. And then mm-hmm. with the potential that we um, have um, purchased HSBC and then everything is still finalized from one bank uh, to push the um, technology system to a different bank, then there's a huge project and it's gonna be um, two to three years. um, That's the timeline. So we're thinking of rolling out. So uh, how can I play a role in it? So that um, the whole DTM program give me a new perspective and how can I help the team and how to be a really good contributor. Uh, when organization is switching system, when um, people are adopting, and then if there's any hurdle coming along, how do we like um, get everyone engaged and get them to share their perspective, yet understand in a personable way and encourage them daily how uh, to celebrate small wins and one step at a time to move it forward. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, really a tremendous experience and learning journey for me. 
Well, that's great perspective. And I think probably a lot of people could relate <laughs> with how many systems and different things that we have to use these days. And really, it is that human piece that you mentioned, right, to be able to understand how to engage and collaborate with others to make it work um, and go through some of those changes. So thank you. Um, we had a question come in, uh, maybe David, if you're willing. Uh, how do you feel about participating in the program while working? and any advice or recommendations you might have uh, to be successful in balancing? Sure. So um, I do quite a bit of traveling for work. Uh, so I'm on the road with my laptop, and I never really had any time constraints. Um, we're pretty busy most of the time, and I was able to work on the uh, modules uh, at the end of my, my work day and not really have to, I guess, dedicate a lot of time on a single day. So you're not using your whole Saturday or whole Sunday to do anything. Um, the, the layout is, is very, I guess, it, not easy, but it's, it's laid back. Um, the lectures that you get to watch are between 30 minutes and an hour. So then those are not long at all. And then you can, download the uh, slides to help you with your uh, project. So for me, it was it was not difficult at all. Um, I was able to find time for everything. Uh, I think I turned in one assignment late and the professors were really uh, accommodating to that. So, you know, if you do run into issues, just communicate with the professors and they'll work with you, so. Good point. I saw you nodding a little bit, Sienna, but curious, kind of your perspective. How did you balance working and uh, being engaged in the program? I have to pay really a uh, good attribute to my teammate, David, <laughs> even though like um, I'm from Vancouver and he's from South Carolina and we have another teammate that's from Toronto too. Like we have like different location on um, different time zone, but we still manage to get our project done e e efficiently and effectively. And then you'll be amazed like through this program, um, um, how many uh, people and from different um, like companies industry or even country background you get into and then they are so like open and then so flexible and then like uh, we just build a team together to um, work this uh, together and maybe if we can uh, touch on that a little bit too I didn't realize that you were both part of the same group until we met and we were starting to chat a little while ago but uh, maybe if you could explain the dynamic between the individual and then the group work and then how uh, you're engaging throughout the program. What is that like? Um, so the 18 weeks program, uh, it's like uh, the first half is individual work by um, we individual put the assignment to a discussion board and we review the uh, discussion. Um, uh, and learn together. And then the latter part, the uh, last nine weeks is group work. So uh, based on the communication and listening uh, um, what uh, appetites, that's uh, Dr. Yip's um, chapter. So he did a survey, so according to that, and then he assigned different groups with uh, people in terms of different expertise. Um, I was so lucky and honored to be assigned with David uh, and then uh, Akani. So like um, they have like business analyst background. So it helped um, the journey to smooth a lot. And then um, with their access to certain um, software in terms of mapping, and then their perspective of the try and work method in their work, everything was eye opening for me. And then I learned a lot through, through this process. I saw you nodding a bit, David, just curious if there's anything else you wanted to add. Uh, no, that was pretty spot on. Uh, the transition from working individually with a group is pretty seamless. Um, you know, one thing I've noticed when I've done online classes before is that there's not a lot of engagement with the attendees or the people taking the class. And that's not the case with this, uh, with this class. Like, um, we had a lot of engagement, a lot of folks ready to talk about, you know, what they've experienced. And you got a whole different wide variety of people taking the class as well so you know you could be partnered up with somebody who has 
a whole lot of experience and, and some people just getting into the field. And I think having those different types of aspects uh, really make for a great group environment. So, um, and like Siana said, we, we, we were able to collaborate really well and schedule our time and dedicate, you know, one or two hours a week and just round table and, you know, everybody's engaged and they're ready to learn. So it was, it was really good. Feedback. Thank you. Um, I'm curious if we can invite uh, Dr. Blaze uh, Horner Reach back on. I don't know, Blaze, if you can um, maybe turn on your camera and mic, but we did have a question around what are the common challenges an organization is going through um, in terms of digital transformation? You could touch on that if you don't mind. Thank you, Jen. Um, I've written about this and, and there, there's lots of challenges that organizations are facing now with digital transformation. And, and one of the things is they've got to build, rebuild the base. They've got to rebuild the platform that the organization works on. And I think uh, Sienna mentioned Salesforce. And that's, that's if you get Salesforce, you install it, that's a new platform for engaging with your customers and your clients and your donors. Um, and that's a big deal. It's not a technology play at all. It's really that everybody that talks to customers or involved with customers has got to understand how that technology works. And Sienna's gonna find that companies, uh, SaaS products like the the uh, platform products like Salesforce will allow her actually to engage with Salesforce and start to be partly a tech person as well. So that's the opportunity really for business people to learn about, learn the tricks of technology people and start to get engaged. So that's one issue. One issue is the platform itself. The other issue is, is basically getting everybody on, on board in a technology uh, transformation because you'll find that in, for example, we just in, uh, talked to Save, Save on Foods, which is one of the largest food organizations here in uh, the West of Canada. We talked to Save on Foods and they turn on a new HR system and 23,000 people have to use it day one. And of course you need to, a tremendous amount of preparation to make that successful. And I'm sure some of the folks in the audience have found that it's not always successful, it's, it's stressful and it slows everything down. So really this program is, is meant to get at the basics. What are you trying to do? Who's going to do it? And how can you and be engaged, whatever your role is in the organization to be more successful? Thank you, Blaze. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> we have lots of stories, right? That example oh, of that and amazing perspective. And I feel like we're going through it together. You often hear kind of the example of Save on Foods and people bringing those live, right? Like I'm doing it now. Um, and so we're finding out about a lot of those challenges and also how people are creating some solutions or options through them, uh, through this yeah. program. So love that. The digital transformation yeah. is really, um, really broad in many organizations. They may go at it a business unit at a time or a function at a time. But it really is broad. And that's why folks like Sienna, having her being able to step up and really understand what's behind that tech wall and participate in is so fantastic. I love that. Uh, we have a specific question coming in. Uh, do we touch on lean or agile methodologies in the program? Yes. Uh, Dr. Jamino's section uh, talks about lean and agile and traditional and shows the benefits of each and also talks about something that we've written about last year in a paper about hybrid, which is the new way to do projects, which is to start from one of those bases and add different practices that allow you the project to be most successful. So you'll learn about all of that. Yes, absolutely. Amazing. And we still have time for more questions. Just as a reminder, if you want uh, to ask any questions, uh, you can use that Q&A box in the uh, center of your screen at the bottom panel there, and then uh, they'll come up uh, so that I can see them. 
Um, so we did have a question around uh, how can I get involved? When is the next program being offered? <laughs> so uh, for the Digital Transformation Management Program, it is coming up soon. Uh, the next one is uh, starting on January 30th, which is this coming Monday. So there still is time to join. Uh, it is a program run through SFUBD Executive Education. And maybe we can drop the link into the chat if I can ask for some help from Vince um, so that you can get to that, that website. And then the next program will be offered in June. So if you um, aren't prepared to come in this coming Monday, uh, we do have a June offering as well. And then for the leadership program, uh, it kicks off in February. So a little bit more time there. And so we'll put those links in the chat. So there's really, uh, we've programmed three starts for each program each year, right, Jen? You got it. Yeah. So there's uh, multiple uh, start dates. And um, what we try and really do is curate those uh, cohorts of participants coming in. So we see a really good representation across different industries and sectors. And uh, to Sienna and David's point, we also try and form teams. So you're learning from different types of roles um, within those teams when you get into the, the content of the program. And just for those folks who are in leadership positions and have a team, as Jen mentioned, there's a, a webinar specifically on DTL coming up. It's a bit of a shorter program, about 11 weeks. But just as every week you're going to be creating slides and then at the end you're pitching a new idea for your organization, a new idea based on a, a digital transformational idea for your organization or you're part of the organization. You got it. And then I had another question. If you wanted to register as an, an individual or um, could we get this supported through our employer? Um, and I would say both are true. So this is an open program in terms um, of no prerequisites. So we don't uh, have you go through a long application process or anything like that. So you can come in as an individual uh, straight to the program. Uh, but if you are coming in uh, through your employer, or have your employer's support, there are different granting options that are available uh, either through federal or provincial governments that our team can support you with. So it helps bring down the program fees and uh, help support uh, your application into the program as well. So if you're interested in either one, um, you can reach out to us at SFU Dial. And we can put the email there. And it's usually best if we can just have a, a conversation, understand what your motivations are, and then we can give you some uh, guidance on how to uh, register. Um, but just wanted to give a big thanks uh, to our speakers today, to Dr. Blaise horner Reich, uh, to David, to Sienna, and thank you to our audience for interacting with us. Um, we hope that uh, you gain some new insights and information about the Digital Transformation Management Program today. And also just wanted to remind you about the upcoming webinar around the Digital Transformation Leadership Program that'll take place on February 7th. And I believe that link is there in the chat if you want to join us. Uh, so thank you again, and I hope you have a great afternoon. Take care. <laughs>